Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Avelino de Costa and in this video I will be talking about genotoxicity and mutagenicity testing. There are a number of uh, tests which I need to be covering under this particular topic so I will be splitting this video uh, into another few more videos such that I will be able to cover all of these uh, different types of tests. So what is the need for genotoxicity and mutagenicity testing? There are a number of chemicals that are being uh, synthesized, new, uh, newly synthesized chemicals which are having some potential applications in say probably medicine or in uh, maybe in agriculture uh, and a number of applications as such and for that reason there could potentially be a way in which these chemicals could be exposed to human beings and for that reason um, uh, people want to know whether these chemicals could be toxic in one way or the other. And so one of the tests which are done to uh, estimate the toxicity is uh, to find out whether those substances affect the DNA and a number of tests are done uh, with this which are referred to as genotoxicity tests or mutagenicity tests. So uh, there are a number of tests which are employed uh, which use uh, either bacterial systems or which can use uh, mammalian systems uh, and uh, we can easily come to know whether you know the, the results produced by these systems uh, are showing uh, some type of toxicity or not by, uh, by looking at certain characteristics of that particular test. So uh, in this particular video I'll be talking about uh, the, the bacterial tests that are done particularly the AIMS tests and in the other videos I'll be covering the in vitro uh, mammalian tests and other tests as well. So to talk about uh, the AIMS test or the bacterial reverse mutation assay. Uh, this uses uh, bacteria, some uh, species of bacteria and some strains of bacteria to uh, test the uh, potential mutagenicity and there therefore the carcinogenicity of certain substances. So uh, as I told you in one of my first uh, videos that uh, genotoxic substances uh, uh, genotoxicity leads to mutagenicity and mutagenicity can lead to carcinogenicity but these terms should not be mixed with each other right so mutagenic agents may be carcinogenic but it is not necessarily that the, uh, the mutations may always progress into a cancer right so uh, we uh, in any case we do uh, these uh, this uh, AIMS test to figure out whether a particular chemical is going to be mutagenic uh, or not so in, uh, in, uh, in the early 1970s, uh, Bruce Ames and his uh, uh, associates, they developed this particular test and they named it after him, the Ames test, which basically uh, is a very cost effective test and you can uh, actually test a, a large number of chemicals in a very short span of time and at a very relatively low cost also. So what essentially it does is that it, it uses uh, the bacteria that is the sal Salmonella typhimurium mm -hmm. and this is not the normal Salmonella typh uh, typhimurium it is uh, the Salmonella which is having some type of mutations in the genes that are required to make histidine so the Salmonella is unable to make histidine on its own under normal circumstances the bacteria can easily make histidine uh, via some biochemical processes using some genes within its, uh, within its DNA but uh, these uh, Salmonella are, are unable to produce histidine on their own uh, because they are carrying some mutations in in certain genes and these genes will be required uh, will be uh, will be uh, basically be uh, translating into an enzyme which will be probably required for uh, histidine biosynthesis so if any one of these genes is going to be altered or mutated uh, histidine is never going to be produced so as a result these bacteria in order to survive they need to be cultured in medium which is having histidine so if histidine is not going to be present these bacteria will die. The importance of histidine is that uh, histidine helps uh, for the bacteria to grow and to survive and so obviously without histidine these bacteria will die. So these bacteria need to be cultured in histidine uh, such that uh, they are able to survive and proliferate. So keeping this in mind the bacteria that are so designed that are designed uh, they do not uh, have uh, the uh, the potential to make uh, histidine probably because of certain mutations that are there in the genes that are helping to synthesize histidine. So what, what, how can we take advantage of this is that when we culture these bacteria, when these bacteria are going to be cultured on a medium and we inoculate the medium or we, we 
add to the medium uh, a, a substance that needs to be tested. Okay, suppose it's a chemical that we want to test and we want to see whether it is going to be uh, mutagenic or not. We are going to spread plate the uh, bacteria on an agar uh, plate and then we are also going to add some of this chemical to be tested. If the chemical is mutagenic, this chemical can actually convert these mutant genes which are there in the salmonella back into their normal forms. Okay, so these uh, this chemical, if it is mutagenic, can convert the mutant gene into a normal form. So this is something that is referred to as a back mutation. Okay, where uh, already mutated uh, gene gets reverted back into its original form. And now, now this gene, if it becomes into a normal gene, now it is able to synthesize that particular enzyme that will be used for making histidine. So uh, if only if this particular substance which is to be tested is mutagenic, then only will you be able to see the growth of this uh, salmonella without the help of histidine. All right? So from this, uh, the uh, frequency of reversion can be calculated and we can then calculate and see how mutagenic this particular substance actually is. So you can see over here is that the salmonella strain I'll talk about this rat liver extract in just a bit. The salmonella strain will either be inoculated directly with the mutagen or the mutagen could all be uh, uh, spread onto the uh, plate, either spread plated or with the help of a small disc. It could be placed in the center of uh, the agar plate and it will be incubated with the uh, minimal histidine. So why they use minimal histidine is that they will just allow uh, the uh, the growth of uh, the salmonella for maybe a few rounds of uh, division and but it will not produce uh, visible colonies as such okay and but if this particular mutagen if this particular substance is mutagenic then uh, the, the bacteria will revert back into their uh, original form that is they, their genes will be back mutated to be able to produce histidine and so if this particular substance is mutagenic you will be able to see large number of colonies of salmonella uh, growing on the uh, media. That is, now these salmonella now are able to synthesize their own histidine and are not dependent on any uh, uh, extra sources of histidine which are present in the uh, media. Uh, whereas if in case the, uh, the particular substance is not mutagenic, then you will not be able to see the growth of any uh, of any salmonella colonies over here. So whatever colonies are probably being seen over here are those which are naturally mutating. So you will not get them in very large numbers as compared to the, the media which is going to have a large number of revertants if this particular substance was mutagenic. So right here you can see uh, a, a plate which is showing uh, the salmonella which is uh, cultured on the agar plate and you can see that there are a few colonies around over here. Okay, So these are the ones which have uh, naturally mutated back to producing uh, histidine. Okay, So these are very very uh, less number of these uh, these particular bacteria but in this case you can see a disc which has been soaked with uh, the the substance which is probably mutagenic you can see such a large number of bacteria have started to grow around now you can see that there's a zone of inhibition over here that is there is no growth of any bacteria just around the disc so that is because as the particular uh, substance starts diffusing through the agar the concentration of the substance is going to be the highest around the disc and it, uh, the concentration obviously will start decreasing as it keeps on diffusing outwards. So at this particular concentration, probably the concentration is, uh, is too high for the bacteria to actually be surviving. But at a lower concentration, that is when it starts diffusing outside, the bacteria are able to grow in, uh, in the presence uh, of that particular substance at that concentration. And you can see these are all the bacteria that have been back reverted. So they have been back mutated and they, were able, they are able to grow now without any histidine over. So this is how it looks like and yeah you can see some other uh, examples of how these uh, the, the substance has been soaked in the uh, in the disc and uh, you can see a zone of inhibition that is the that's probably very high concentration of the substance but then around that zone of inhibition you can see the growth of the uh, bacteria. So these are the bacteria that have been back mutated and they are able to grow. So this indicates that the substance that has been placed over here in the medium is mutagenic because it is allowing the growth of the salmonella over here. So uh, uh, using the AIMS test a large number of chemicals could be tested for their uh, mutagenicity and uh, uh, so uh, many scientists were able to come to some 
conclusions and you know where they were uh, these this information could then be passed on to regulatory bodies uh, so that they could give some kind of uh, uh what do you say guidelines as to how these chemicals could be used what could be their acceptable daily intake right if they were like some additives that had to be added to food and so these things need to be tested okay before it reaches the general public and one of the tests that is being done is this uh, aims test yeah so i was coming to the point of uh, this uh, liver extract so the rat liver extract is basically the the liver which is going to be homogenized and it is going to be uh, centrifuged and the uh, the uh, Uh, the aqueous solution what is going to be uh, uh, obtained is going to be added to the chemical why is this done is because sometimes the uh, the chemical by itself is not going to be mutagenic right when it enters into our body it may not directly start causing damage in our body so what it does is that when a foreign substance enters into our body our liver tries to detoxify it by trying to convert it into something that is less toxic but sometimes these chemicals they don't get converted into something less toxic in fact they get converted into something which is even more toxic right because these substances don't have any part in our they don't belong in our body so the liver doesn't know what to do with it, it tries to convert it as much as it can to something that it feels is going to be non toxic but in most cases uh, or in some cases i would say this uh, uh, substance gets converted into something which is even more toxic all right so then uh, this would make more sense to use a rat liver extract because the rat liver extract would be containing all of those enzymes which would be trying to convert the substance into something which is uh, less mutagenic or less toxic but uh, on the other hand the rat liver extract may actually convert it into something which is even more toxic so if we get such a situation where uh, the 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 homogene uh, the the was the metabolite becomes toxic we will definitely get the growth of this salmonella uh, the which have been back mutated and they are able to grow without the histidine yeah so the aims test provides a rapid inexpensive and sensitive procedure for testing the mutagenicity of chemicals and uh, since many mutagens can also be carcinogens the aims test can be used to identify chemicals that have uh, a high likelihood of being carcinogenic but not necessarily that they will be carcinogenic similarly another test can also be done which is referred to as the bacterial reverse mutation assay which uses uh, e coli and uh, just as in case of uh, salmonella the e coli will be uh, synthesized uh, or will be um, uh, will be made in such a way that they are unable to synthesize their own tryptophan and so they need to be growing in a medium which contains an excess of tryptophan and if you add a chemical to it which you feel is going to be mutagenic uh, the the genes which are helping to create tryptophan may be back mutated and then they are able to grow Uh, in the medium without any tryptophan so this is similar to the salmonella typho medium where they use histidine but in case of uh, e coli here they are using tryptophan okay and the back mutate the back mutated versions will be the ones that are uh, being caused because of the mutagenicity of that particular compound so the aims test is a very very important test that is used to screen the carcinogenicity of potential drugs and is also used as one of the first uh, uh, first screening tests Uh, to test for the toxicity of different different compounds especially the newly synthesized compounds or compounds that need to be used for uh, certain uh, food uh, in certain food additives or in uh, certain applications uh, they can be uh, they will be used in many dr- in toxicity testing facilities in india as well as around the world so uh, though it is used so extensively there are going to be certain limitations like uh, certain mutagens which are identified in the aims test may not necessarily be carcinogenic as i told you it may not uh, these may be mute, uh, give causing mutations but uh, they may not necessarily lead to cancer as i told you cancer is is a long term process and there may be certain other tests that need to be done to actually test the carcinogenicity another thing that needs to be taken into consideration is that we are using bacteria we are not using uh, actual animal models or human models to really understand uh, mut- because mut- mutagenicity could be slightly different the 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 way in which mutations occur in a higher organism may be slightly different though uh, whatever mutations are being seen in bacteria most of them are going to be mutagenic in mammals and human beings as well but uh, there there's always going to be this slight difference of the systems that is you know bacterial systems and mammalian systems are very much different from each other so it is not necessary that a bacteria uh, that a substance that is showing mutagenicity in bacteria may show mutagenicity in 
uh, in mammals, though the there is always a, a, a chance that if it is mutagenic in bacteria, it could be mutagenic in human beings, but it's not. It may not always be the case. And so definitely further testing may be required in mammalian models and, uh, you know, in other culture systems and false positives may be reported. So, for example, if there is an uh, amine group that is present in the particular compound to be tested, that's the time it may show uh, positivity. That is, the, the bacteria may revert uh, back into their uh, original states that, and produce histidine or salmonella. Uh, and in fact, but these compounds may not actually be mutagenic in nature. That is, uh, they may be stimulating the back mutation of the genes, but they are, they are not actually mutagenic as such. And so that is what is referred to as a false positive. So it is not necessarily going to be a mutagenic uh, substance, even though we are seeing the reversion of the bacteria into the original state. In the next video, I'll be talking about the other types of uh, genotoxicity and mutagenicity tests. Thank you.